Ever since Roswell, America has been fixated with the possibility of alien life secretly visiting Earth from their home star in a galaxy far, far away. There are literally mountains of witness testimonies from people who claim to have had contact and or a close encounter of many kinds with what they claim were extraterrestrial beings. However, regardless of the incredible curiosity and the reams of supposed whistleblowers surrounding military bases like that of Groom Lake's Area 51, secret bases on the moon, and, of course, witness testimonies, all claim to have been experienced by millions. Yet solid evidence for the existence of extraterrestrial life seemingly eludes us all to this day. Or does it? Many people refuse to accept the reality that we have, for many years, been actively observed by an intelligent life form not of this world. But without any concrete admittance by the powers that be, Many people will not even consider such possibilities, long denied by their government. This, regardless of the many more intriguing sightings, along with the most incredible of footage. It is simply not enough for this major shift in acceptance, without the gatekeepers of paradigm's permittance. However, hopefully, the following information may persuade some of them to reconsider. To not follow in blind faith a governance that is seemingly withholding that which is deserved by all, the truth. In 2004, several Navy officers who witnessed what has since become known as the Nimitz UFO encounter have come forward with an astonishing claim. Like something straight out of a Man in Black movie, the officers say that unknown yet highly unusual and incredibly high-ranking individuals appeared at their location shortly after the event. These mysterious figures then ordered the confiscation of all data recordings and videos pertaining to the event. During the November of 2004, a Navy missile cruiser anchored around 100 miles off the coast of Southern California detected strange radar signals radiating from an unknown craft. The officers claimed that the signals were erratic, yet clearly of an artificial nature. They could not identify the signal's intended message, due to them never having encountered such a signal before. It didn't strangely match any given off by any known modern aircraft. Jet fighters were subsequently deployed to the UFO's location. These fighters buzzed the craft, successfully capturing footage and telemetry of the unknown object. One of the jets in particular succeeded in recording substantial, compelling, and as yet unexplained maneuvers. In 2017, the government released a number of recordings of the encounter. To the public, however, it seems that this so-called disclosure was anything but. Five Navy veterans recently spoke to the popular mechanics franchise, where they subsequently dropped this bombshell. They told all regarding what they experienced at the time. Having all been part of the Navy's Strike Carrier Group 11, they were sailing on the USS Princeton when the encounter occurred. After detecting the object, the men successfully captured footage of the UFO's incredible capabilities. The object would quickly change altitudes, sometimes lurking 80,000 feet nearly instantaneously. The UFO became known as Tic Tac because of its shape. Yet, due to this confiscation of data by this unknown group, who not only had they never heard of, but seemed to carry near limitless superiority of the military operations, they rarely spoke of the incident. They further claimed that the so-called Tic Tac gave off a phosphorus glow at night and would dart around in various directions, said one of the veterans, Gary Voorhees, who looked at the object through binoculars on the ship. Why did men in black take control of the data surrounding this UFO? What is it that they are hiding? Was Tic Tac a real UFO, built and sent here by an ancient civilization in another galaxy? We find the details surrounding this encounter highly compelling. Our conjecture that there is a lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization could be proven beyond doubt by one continent in particular. Antarctica, for many millennia, this land has been encased, perfectly preserved, laying beneath miles of ancient ice. 
The Piri Rees map, something which we have discussed in the past, has long been argued to prove just that, long claimed as showing that of the landmass of Antarctica free of ice. If true, it would have been impossible to have created, according to modern paradigm, thought to have originated from the embers of the Great Fire of Alexandria, this catastrophe, a tragic loss to man's understanding of our own origins. Yet, this map survived, clearly displaying what many believe to be the continent of Antarctica, before becoming what is now a frozen ice cap at the pole of our planet. It is now an incredibly inhospitable place, one of the reasons we feel there may be intact, undisturbed ruins, which may dot the land, known to be the driest place on Earth. And in addition to this compelling possibility of submerged yet highly advanced ruins, there may be many other unexplained anomalies that, due to their incredibly remote geographical placement, across some of the world's now most impenetrable natural obstacles, recording some of the lowest temperatures on Earth, if proven beyond doubt to exist, would be proof of a preserved pre-Ice Age existence for advanced man. Yet due to this immense cold, and the fact that it is a largely unexplored tundra capable of killing even the most experienced of explorers, many things which rest here remain unexplored. Yet just like that of the face of the moon, one must ask the question, just what could be laying there? buried within or resting upon this giant ice sheet many miles deep. Objects just like the anomalies discovered in Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947, which, although strongly argued by officials as that of a United States Army Air Force's balloon which crashed at tremendous velocity at a ranch near Roswell, which many claim was in fact a UFO which crashed, would inevitably be covered up by whatever power was capable of not only visiting such anomaly, but retrieving it. Crashing into the seemingly endless tundra, and our next item of interest could behold just as controversial in origin as that of the causation for what many claim as the Roswell Conspiracy, a truth so controversial only top military personnel would be privy to. This remarkable image taken by satellite clearly displays an as yet unexplored anomaly. Resting at the basin of a hilltop, it presumably crashed into, with its velocity upon impact sliding the mysterious object down the side of the mountain. When other such objects have been discovered in the past, indeed in the same way as that of amateur sleuths, poring over satellite images looking for these exact features, Military vehicles have been later snapped at these same locations, unquestionable proof of the world's government's interest in such discoveries, not only due to the environment, but also its remoteness. Found in permanently frozen areas could mean that if such objects do indeed turn out to be that of an alien craft, could also be in a condition to be successfully reversed-engineered if not repaired by man. A technological explosion would inevitably occur, a lucrative operation indeed. So, we find it curious that several such events have been claimed to have occurred since 1947. Could this also be posited to be as a result of this exact claim scenario? Discovered, retrieved, reverse-engineered, and finally either adapted for military purpose or commercial profits? What is this thing laying far away in the frozen Antarctic? Is it indeed a crashed alien vehicle? We find the anomaly highly compelling. Specialist researchers in Volgograd, Russia have discovered over a dozen ancient disc-shaped objects which they strongly believe to be the remnants of several crashed UFOs, including one object which is over 4 meters in diameter. According to experts, these strange, out-of-place disks are coated in a thick layer of tungsten, a high-density metal often used in military technology. Kosmopoisk, the team who made the discoveries, is a notorious Russian UFO and cryptozoology research group. They were performing excavations in the district, 
in an attempt to locate these specific unknown objects. They believe, yet will not share where this information originated from, that these tungsten disks are in fact the remnants of several alien craft which crashed in the area during a quote, event. We had already found about a dozen of these disks. Most of them had a diameter of around 1 meter. At Kuzbas, we uncovered a disk-shaped object with a diameter of nearly 2 meters. But this new disk is a unique and impressive find, a member of the team said. The shape of the 4-meter disk is extremely similar to that of our modern-day interpretations of UFOs, and it has clearly given UFO hunters a lot to talk about. It is, as yet, unknown what is within these strange disks of metal. Could there possibly be the remains of ancient pilots? The fact that they are made with a thick outer layer of tungsten is highly compelling. Tungsten is the metal of choice when it comes to high temperatures, this being due to it having the highest melting point of all known metals. It is a prime choice for withstanding the heat from entering Earth's atmosphere. One of the main reasons for its use within military hardware, such as orbital missiles. The newly found disk has been transported to the Zernovsky Museum, where scientists are studying it in an attempt to establish its age and the exact composition of the materials within. Although they clearly reject the possibility of it being an alien craft, they themselves do not know exactly what these disks are, where they came from, how they came into being, or indeed what may lay inside. Earlier this year, another mysterious tungsten-coated disk was discovered in Russia by a mining company near the city of Belovo. The mysterious 1.2-meter disk was located at a depth of 40 meters within the mine, strongly suggesting that it is very ancient. Archaeologists performed several tests and reluctantly concluded that the perfectly circular object was somehow made by man in the very distant past, though they severely lacked any explanation as to how that was even possible. More information regarding the objects will hopefully be made available after experts analyze them in the Zernovsky Museum in Russia. We will keep you posted. On April the 17th, 1897, an incredible event would occur in a small farm within Aurora, Texas. According to the locals, an alien craft came streaking down towards their farmhouse before dramatically crashing through a windmill and into a nearby field. The incident, now known as the Aurora UFO incident, was strangely similar to the Roswell crash. The people who lived on this extremely remote farm would actually discover alien corpses within the alien wreckage. On the 19th of April, 1897, Dallas Morning News, written by Aurora resident S. E. Hayden, alleged that the UFO is said to have hit a windmill on the property of a judge, J. S. Proctor, two days earlier at around 6 a.m., resulting in its crash. A pilot, who was reported to have been not of this world and Martian-looking, according to a reported army officer from nearby Fort Worth, did not survive the crash, subsequently buried with Christian rites at the nearby Aurora Cemetery. And the cemetery does indeed contain a Texas Historical Commission marker mentioning the incident. Reportedly, wreckage from the crash site was dumped into a nearby well, while some ended up with the alien in the grave. Adding to the mystery was the story of Mr. Brawley Oates, who purchased Judge Proctor's property around 1935. Oates cleaned out the debris from the well in order to use it as a water source, but later developed an extremely severe case of arthritis. He later claimed that he was convinced it to have been a result of the contaminated alien water. However, not only is there clearly extremely compelling details here, some of which clearly need to be investigated further. There is also the site of an alien grave. On December 2, 2005, UFO Files undertook an investigation related to the incident, titled Texas's Roswell. Their episode featured a 1973 investigation led by Bill Case, an aviation writer for the Dallas Times-Herald and the Texas State Director of Mutual UFO Network, MUFON. MUFON investigated the Aurora Cemetery. They discovered a rather peculiar stone that was, in fact, a headstone, which depicts an alien craft. This stone signifies the resting place of what most of the town are convinced was an alien being. 
the team received very strange readings from metal detectors when exploring the grave. Mufon asked for permission to exhume the site, but the cemetery association declined permission. After the Mufon investigation, the marker mysteriously disappeared from the cemetery, and a 3-inch pipe was placed into the ground. Mufon's metal detectors no longer picked up the strange metal readings from the grave. Thus, it is now largely presumed that the artifacts, along with remains, have been secretly removed from the grave. Mufon's report eventually stated that the evidence was inconclusive, but did not rule out the possibility of that strange event actually occurring on the night of 1897. Although the cemetery association still do not permit exhumation, ground-penetrating radar has been used on the grave. However, the condition has badly deteriorated, and the radar was not able to conclusively prove what's still there. Could there really have once been an alien buried in this small corner of Aurora? Sadly, we may never know for sure. On December 9, 1957, an incredible event occurred within the UK. Now known as the Silpho Saucer Incident, it has become known within UFO enthusiast circles as the UK's Roswell. It was a story that was first released within the Yorkshire Post. It told of a mystery disc that was found on the Yorkshire Moors. Scarborough businessman Frank Dickinson, along with two friends, were driving through a place known as Reesty Hill, near the village of Silpho, when their car mysteriously stalled as a glowing object appeared in the sky above them, subsequently landing in the Borax Forest. Mr. Dickinson and his friends bravely pursued the downed craft and found a mysterious metallic saucer in a patch of freshly cindered bracken. Amazingly, when the artifact was cut open, apparently a tiny book was found within made of 17 thin copper sheets covered in 2,000 unknown hieroglyphs. Interestingly, similar hieroglyphics were also supposedly found among the wreckage of the UFO that allegedly crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in June 1947. The remains of the Silpho Moor object were subsequently sent to a London laboratory for examination in 1963, including a perplexing fused section of the metal and plastic which was apparently from the outer casing. Gordon Claringbull, a funded academic from the Natural History Museum who specialized in meteorites and explosives, said in a memo to the Science Museum that he was prepared to wager anything that the pieces of metal were made on Earth. However, although the scientific community was predictably skeptical, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, who led the RAF during the Battle of Britain during World War II, examined the Silpho saucer in 1958. He actually believed it was genuine. Describing it as a quote, miniature computer piloted flying saucer, Lord Dowding was openly convinced it was a genuine artifact from space, according to the report in the Yorkshire Post. The results of the analysis found that the artifacts contained an unusually pure set of metals, cast in highly specific ways, fueling the UFO community's interest in the object's fragments. Will more modern specific analysis shed more light on this enigmatic object's origins? We will keep you posted on any future developments. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.